I think it's a really great concept to um, show people how the space can look so different and it seems to me it's slowing people down. It's so instead of just this very long recti rectilinear street, there's places to hesitate, to meet. I love the formality of, of the way it, you can look at a space in a, in a, in a different way. You look at this space here, we've talked about how it sort of seems to gravitate towards the centre. So in a flexible way, just because we've taken over the space, being able to interfere with a normal occupation and way of using the space by putting things in people's ways, forcing them to actually use it and to question how it's being used, because they don't normally do that. But seeing the umbrellas up makes me think, yeah, um, planning policy should allow for um, coffee shops and restaurants in a street like this. Many ways of working that challenge how we perceive space are fundamental in any process of design and involving a range of participants. We have perceptions on their understanding against our understanding. We don't actually always know how to engage them. I think using something like Snug and Outdoors is a useful mechanism, a useful tool to change the way in which they have previously perceived space and how it can be occupied. Certainly the toddlers have um, warmed to this and they see it as little climbing boxes. I think it also shows how few seats there are in this uh, shopping street that if there were more, particularly on a day like this, they would also be, be used. We keep moving these elements around, but they always seem to become they always seem to come back to the centre. And people seem to occupy them at the centre. And we've been trying to shove them to the edges and they last for a short while and then everybody moves them back. So it's almost like it's a comfortable space. But I think it just generally I think it's relaxing people and they, they sit in a much more um, free and casual way than, than the sort of regimented benches.